it's Holly's Hot Spurs, welcome back. Talking Tottenham every week, no better place to be sat. If it's a win, lose, draw, we'll be here for a chat. Best believe we tackle topics like Romero with the back. Young Min Son, what can go wrong when he's on form? It's a dream come true, so sit back, relax and vibe with us. Special guests every time, it's a... Hello and welcome to another episode of Holly Hotspurs Live, the first one of 2024. And I'm very excited for this one because we have got some amazing guests to kick off the year. First of all, we're joined by Dakota. Dakota, it's so nice to have you on uh, once again. How are you, my friend? Yeah, it's great. Thanks for inviting me on. Um, like I was just telling you off camera, life's been great. And it's always a little bit sweeter when we get to talk about Spurs wins. So excited to do that with you guys today. 100%, especially in the FA Cup as well. Uh, I'm also joined by Christina. Christina, it's amazing to have you on the show tonight. How are you? I'm all good, thank you. Sorry about last time. I know I was meant to come on, but I was in a bit of a, I was doing jury service, which was a bit of a nightmare. So glad to be able to come back on. <laughs> but properly this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, no. Thank you for obviously taking the time um, for, for coming back on. I do really appreciate it. And we're also joined by Connor. Connor, how are you? Hello, I'm good. Yes, yeah, always good to be back on. Uh, even more buzz. We're still in the FA Cup. So, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And Happy New Year, even though we were, yeah, we, we still say Happy New Year now, can't we? It's, it's, it's not too late. No, we'll, we'll roll with that. Yeah, Happy New Year. Yeah, we'll roll with it, especially when we haven't done a live show in a long time. I'm sure that we can all say uh, Happy New Year. So, well done, Connor, for remembering. <laughs> um, but no, it's nice to see all of you guys already in the chat as well. Hope you are all good. Um, but let's kick off with it. Um, and Christina, I think we're going to start with you because obviously we wanted a strong lineup um, in the FA Cup. And and Ange did not disappoint, did he? Yeah, I was really happy when I saw the lineup. Um, I'm sure most fans were when they saw it come out. Um, but yeah, it was as much as I was happy with that lineup. I wasn't exactly happy with watching it. Shall I say it was? It was pretty awful to watch. It was painful. Um, but you know what? We did it the Tottenham way. We made it hard for ourselves, but we got the win in the end, and that's all that matters. But Oh, what a goal it was from Pedro Porro. You know, it was absolutely amazing. It was just such a huge relief that we, we got it, though. Um, but, no, yeah, I, I was very happy that Ange, I feel like he, he actually listened to the fans because we were all going in for it to say, you know, we want it to start off strong because FA Cup should be Tottenham's priority this season, I believe. Um, and I'm really glad that he went in strong. And I'm hoping that's a message out, you know, that that is what we're going to do this you know, this FA Cup and it's going to be really interesting to see with now the players slowly starting to come back, fingers crossed, um, hopefully no more injuries again, fingers crossed, but you know, this is something that I feel Tottenham really need to prioritise and I think we've got a strong, you know, a good chance, a strong chance of this, especially now seeing there's a few this weekend that got kicked out, I'm sure a lot of people know who I mean, but yeah, so we just have to see how this goes, but it's it's exciting time, hopefully. A hundred percent. And I think the fact, like you said, that we, we wanted a strong team and it's like he's listened to us because, Connor, going out of that Carabao Cup, I was like, please, Ange, play your strong team in this competition. Oh, mate, I was hoping you wouldn't mention that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was... To be fair, that was a lesson, though. Like, that happening for Ange, the, the outrage behind the fact that he didn't take it seriously, although it was his first couple of games, he probably wanted to give those players a chance. Um, and it didn't work. So, you know, I think he understands already how much an FA Cup run would mean to us. Um, and Christine is right. It was probably a, a relief to most, if not all, the fan base to see that he was going to take it seriously. Not, you know, the performance, yes, wasn't great at all. But the most important thing is that we made it through. Um, and, yeah, and, and, you know, beating Prem opposition at home as well is... is from from my perspective, a big statement. Um, I know that Bernie had a, a slightly weaker squad out as well, but no, I'm, I'm just happy we're through. Listen, as long as we don't get a championship side away from home, you know, like Middlesbrough or Sheffield United when they were in, a, you know, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy next round. But but we'll see. But, but at least we're taking it seriously. That's that's the most important thing. I think that's the thing, like I said, we just wanted him to do so and, and we've um, eventually managed to get, obviously, the result to, to mirror that. Um, but to kind of, for me, the one person I was so pleased to see on the team sheet was Ben Tinkor. How amazing is it to see him back? And obviously he had the captain's armband on as well, didn't he? Yeah, what a surprise, by the way. You know, we didn't hear anything about him and then all of a sudden he's in the starting lineup uh, last weekend and then 
um, you know, gets gets to wear the armband as a, a congratulatory thing from Ange, as he said. Um, yeah, I was a little bit surprised Ben Davis didn't have the armband. I wasn't upset that Benton Core had it, you know, and Ange gave his very valid reasoning for giving it to Benton Core. And, you know, there were, there was some uh, talk with some of my friends that maybe that's a message of what Ange uh, wants out of that position that kind of deep playing midfielder box to box midfielder. He wants that to be kind of the, the engine room of the whole squad and putting the armband on someone like Benton is a, a perfect way to kind of send that little message to the team of this is an important position for us. And whoever goes out in, in the game to play this position, a lot will be expected from you. And, you know, we didn't necessarily see anything extravagant from Benton but he was tidy. He was quick kept things going i felt like late on he we saw him pop up more around the box um kind of sending that message to the team of hey we need a goal and we need it now and luckily for us pedro poro heard that message loud and clear <laughs> he did a hundred percent um i mean because i was going to ask you christina what did you kind of make of obviously ben Tinker's performance is there anything you want to add to it you think it's just him slowly coming back into the team yeah it's only the start isn't it i mean it's, it's obviously it's not his strongest performance, but we know what he is capable of. Um, so it's, you, you know, even for him with all these injuries, he's only just started to, you know, warm up, you know, with this second half of the season. So, yeah, he got the job done. I, I thought he was strong. Um, I, I, I just feel like I need to mention other players more importantly, because I know that there's been a few that have had some negative uh, comments recently. And, um I'm actually totally against it. Um, one of those players I wanted to mention was um, Brennan Johnson, who I thought actually played really well. Um, it's just such a shame that there's so many negative uh, comments about him. And I, I, t I truly don't actually understand it. I thought he was quick with the ball. I thought he got into position. He's very, very quick in knowing exactly where the ball's going. Um, you know, he was making some class touches, uh, especially at the first half. Um, it's just a shame. It's just, a, you know, it's just that finish that isn't there. Um, there was a few times I thought where Richardson should have been more aware of when, when the ball was coming into, you know, in the box, because that is his job at the end of the day. He is a striker. He should be hungry for these goals. That's exactly what he should be, you know, going in for, um, which I felt Richardson kind of let him down a few times, because if Richardson had been scoring those goals, I'm pretty sure Brendan Johnson would have been getting all the, you know, or positives of, with all the assists or whatever it was. Um, but I, I truly thought he was really good. And we've got to remember, guys, this guy is only 22 years old. He's only 22 years old. He didn't even have a pre-season with Tottenham. Um, and he's, this is pretty overwhelming for him to be joining a big club like Tottenham, you know. Um, so, you know, it's a huge opportunity. And he's gone straight in there on his own. You know, he's literally been thrown in at the deep end. Um, and I think he's doing a great start. And... I just thought I really need to point that out because I've just seen so many of these negative and I think we really need to get behind these boys and, you know, especially someone like Brennan Johnson who Andrews obviously wanted to have in the team. We also need to have faith in our manager. You know, there's just, uh, to me, there's just no time for the negative and I think we just need to be getting behind all the boys and getting behind our club. I'm glad you said and you brought that up already because obviously I think I did a thing on the week in midweek about obviously all the, the weird hate against Brennan Johnson because it's kind of like what Christina said. I, I don't understand where it's coming from. Is it the fact that we're losing patience and we're not creating enough? Is it because we haven't got, dare I say it, Harry Kane at the top banging the goals in after those crosses have come in from the likes of Brennan Johnson? Because it's true what Christina said. If a cross came in and Harry Kane was in there, we'd probably not be having this conversation. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think the issue you've got is they want a scapegoat. They want if we're scraping through a game against Burnley one 0 they want to go. Oh well, we've not created enough that game. Who are we going to pick? We'll pick Brennan Johnson. You know, he's got an assist. What every other game, he scored, scored a couple of goals for us. I like him. I do like him. I think he's a good lad. I think he's bed well in the team. Like Christina said, he's twenty two. He's come to a new club. There's a you know, it's a massive price tag as well, and that's going to play on his head as well. Like I'm, I'm sick to be honest of how and, and you know and you know how much i fall out with spurs fans all the time but i'm sick how we always seem to find someone to pick you know like why can't we get behind the team why have we got to pick a player like things are the vibes are so good right now we have so much to be happy about and positive about and we're like oh you know no this let's just pick on the new young lad who's coming like it, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me but 
you know, this is the same fan base that that largely was against Ange before he came in. So, so it, it's unfortunately you're always going to have that negativity. I, I think it will come with him. From my perspective, he's an Ange signing. So, Ange clearly wanted him. Just give him time. Just let it work. He's doing a great job. From how how I see things, you know, Kulisevsky at times has hasn't been great. Sunny at times wasn't. Um, trying to think of the game that there was a game uh, where Sonny went missing recently and and and, and I'm like and, and you know we, we love Sonny but just stop picking on Brennan what, what, what are you going to achieve from it nothing it, it's it winds me up it, it really winds me up I could I could rant about it for hours but I'm not going to <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is true though like you say I think obviously I'm I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an angel there's players that wind me up but I just don't understand the code why is it Brennan Johnson what what is it yeah, I have no clue. 17 appearances, 14 starts, five goal contributions. Um, and, you know, he's, like like we mentioned, not having a preseason with Ange. He came over late in the window. The, the argument that he is finally just now getting adjusted to life at Spurs. Um, I mean, he might still have to look at the direction map in the facility to know where to go to, like, lunch and stuff. So... Let's give this guy a little bit of time. Uh, he's shown brilliance. Like Christina mentioned, his first touches early in the game were sublime. And yeah, on a different day, he's got three assists in the first half and we're all singing his praises. But instead, maybe he's the guy that gets a bunch of stick at the end of the game. It, it doesn't make sense to me either. He's very clearly showing that he's not just worth the price tag that we paid for him, but it is worth a little bit more um, with what he brings to the team. And I think too, just a kind of a an anecdote. Him being ready so quickly has really allowed Kulusevski to drop to the midfield, which is I think where he thinks he plays best. Um, and you know, with incoming signings, that is probably going to happen more often. Uh, Kulusevski dropping in the midfield and being that kind of roaming playmaker for what could be a pretty lethal front three. I like that you've kind of led that on because that kind of leads me into the next question. Because obviously we've spoken a little bit about Richarlison, Christina, but um, Dakota's alluded to someone potentially coming in, and that is Werner on the dance floor, which I cannot get out of my head. Uh, so that being said, what would, what do you kind of make of this signing potentially coming in? Where does he kind of sit um, within the Tottenham squad? Big conversation at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> oh my gosh, the debates that are going on at the moment is insane. Um, but you know, it's, it's a very good point, though, which people are making because I, I watched him at Chelsea. I wasn't particularly, you know, I, I wasn't that impressed. I wasn't impressed at all. Um, but you know what? It, it's like I said to you guys back then, I was just like, I trust Ange. And if he wants him, then there's obviously got to be a reason for it. Ange knows his system very, very well. Um, and his style of play is of, is what, you know, Tottenham have been lacking, you know, that attacking football. And he does it at best, you know. So if he feels that he's going to be worthy of the team, then we've got to sit back and give this guy a chance then, I guess. You know, we've just got to see how it goes. Same with what we're doing with, you know, all the other boys, you know. You've got to give Brendan Johnson a chance. You've got to give, you know, everyone was harassing Emerson Royale. We gave him a chance. Look at him. He's phenomenal. Um, so... It, 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 to me, when I first read it, don't get me wrong, I thought this is a bit weird. Um, it came out of the blue, like anything. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm not saying my opinion too much because I just want to sit back and see how this guy plays under Ange. And I think that's when we can make the judgment. Um, but yeah. It's, it's an interesting call. It's an interesting one. <laughs> I, think it's, I think that's the thing. It's, it's literally just out of nowhere. I think that's the thing that kind of took me back as well, Connor. The fact that, OK, if Ad wants him, fair enough. Um, like Christina alluded to, I, I didn't really see much of him at Chelsea. What he did with Chelsea is kind of offside all the time. And I don't want another offside player not being able to score goals. So for you, is, is, it, is it something, if Ad wants him, so be it. I'll, I'll ride with it sort of thing. 100%. I mean, I'm actually excited about it. I don't know. I know a lot of the fans are a bit sort of sceptical because of how much he was offside and you, you know you see those compilations of all these misses he had and you're like oh, okay but i like him i think he's got a lot of energy he's very passionate he's a german international he wants to prove himself you know that we got the euros in the summer so he's going to come in and be hungry want to show that he can get in the squad for germany for the euros so i'm a big fan of it and i think 
we need some i'm not saying he's going to be a sunny replacement at all while sunny's away at the age cup he's not but we need someone and for me it's risk-free this is people yeah. are forgetting this we are not paying a penny for him bar his wages until the summer if we want him if we don't want him he goes back to leipzig not not a problem not a problem for anyone like I, I understand the scepticism, but for me, coming back to the Prem, he's got a point to prove as well. He wants to show that it wasn't working at Chelsea, so maybe it'll work at Spurs, you know? And it, the system, like Christina said, I think the system will fit him perfectly. I just, yeah, I, I, I like it. I, I really, really like it. And I think it fits us perfectly because January is a really hard window to do business in. So for us to get that over the line without paying anything at the minute, unless we want him permanently, it's fantastic. Get him in the centre-back. And we're laughing. We're all going to go, what a fantastic January, you know? So, mm. no, I like it. I'm, I'm happy yeah. with it. I and quite like it. Oh, sorry, go on to Kaya. Yeah, the summer fee is, like, pretty cheap, too, if he turns out to be good. Um, and, you know, like we said, we all remember the the compilations from Chelsea that we laughed at. He had 23 goals and 21 assists and 89 appearances at Chelsea. It's a goal contribution every other game. I'll take that from a January striker that we that we pay nothing for. Um, so I, I think that there's a lot of good that could come, like Connor said, risk free. Let's let's give it a go, see what happens. Hundred and the thing is as well, um, the kind of staying with you, is the fact that obviously will it eager on uh, the likes of Richarlison to hopefully find the back of the net more, do you think? It can't hurt, right? <laughs> um this guy's already talked about how motivated he is that you know, we spend a lot of money for him and he wants to prove that he's worth it. Um I don't know what they did in his groin surgery, but I'm glad that they did it because he has all of a sudden figured out how to score goals. Um, I wish they'd have uh, told him that offside goals don't count because um, we could use with a few more onside goals from him. Um, but yeah, I, Richie seems like a guy who thrives in, in competition. And if there's somebody coming for his place, he's going to work that little bit extra harder to make sure that people know that he's uh he's the main man but i i think we're gonna see him pushed out wide again and i think we're gonna have timo in in the middle um just to have that pace in the in the center of the park and you know let richie show that he is actually brazilian and can beat a man one-on-one -on -one and get to the byline and uh i don't know I, it, it it's exciting let's see what happens on the pitch but right now it's really exciting on paper and I think as well, we're actually doing some business early, Christina. I mean, I remember so many transfer windows where we sit and wait that someone's going to come in and then they never come in or we get someone that's a last ditch hope. Um, but it seems that we're actually filling the holes that we actually need. Um, so what do you make of obviously, our, I know it hasn't happened yet, but the actual intent to go and do business early? That bloody time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if, you know, when I was reading all the rumours, because obviously this all kicks in straight after, doesn't it? But I try not to get too involved in it i read it and i'm like okay whatever it's just there um but the fact that this is actually happening i mean there's a bloody tracker for his airplane right now you know everyone's on it apparently um so it's just about time and obviously paratici um he's obviously still involved and do you know what hats off to him because hats off to the chef literally because this guy has been cooking at tottenham it's it's brilliant the signings that he's um literally it's so uh, I'm so chuffed about him because he had, again he even had so many negative things when we got him in. Um, you know, he's a, I mean uh, maybe I could agree with it saying that he's a fraud, <laughs> but um, you know there was a lot of people that were worried about him um, when he first came in. But you know what, he's done an incredible job, and he obviously knows when to get these you know young players in and quick. So you know, Kudu thank God we got Kudzeski, Benson, Core, Destiny guys. It's it's. It's the build up to Tottenham. This is what I see. It's now the future and it's it's going in a direction that is brilliant. And of course now we've got Anjin who just fits this style of play for our players. Um and hopefully even for the youngsters that we've got in the under twenty ones. I mean, when you look at it now, people are actually intrigued to know our under twenty one team. Um and it's it's you know, I, I to me I wasn't really um, I, I never really looked it up or anything, but now I'm really into this and I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, oh my God, these boys could definitely get into our, you know, our first team and it's exciting to see. Um, so there's a lot of business going. I don't know how much, obviously, a particular, you know, someone who's involved, uh, how much he is involved, sorry. Um, but obviously things are getting 
done. And they clearly were in the talks uh, before, obviously, the January transfer window. So a lot of this has been going on, um, you know, probably even early the season. I don't know. But it's, it's, it's a good... I just feel really positive with the future at Tottenham. I'm, I'm just really excited to see with what is to come because I truly do believe that good things are going to come. And I, I try and be as... I'm trying to be as positive as a fan, you know, um, but being Tottenham can sometimes shoot you in the head, I guess. But, um, you know, I, I, I think I think we've got a good reason to be, you know, excited now. Hmm. It's almost like we're being proactive for once. And I always used to say we were just a reactionary team. But I think now in the transfer window, we're actually finally being proactive. And I know we've spoken about there's, there's injuries and the potential of new players coming in. But Connor, for me, a new player that's coming back nice and early is Mickey Van de Ven. And my word, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think Davies and Emerson have, have done a great job, um, them two, at centre-back as, as full-backs. But to have Mickey Van de Ven back on that team sheet, wowee, it will be nice, won't it? Oh, mate, honestly, it is like Christmas has come 11 months early. It is so good. Honestly, this guy, the way he hit the Prem straight away, you know, and I know everyone joked about the high line and how exposed we were against Chelsea when we lost him, but we are going to be able to play that again, like properly, you know, because he's the man with the pace, with the power. Let's not forget how young he is as well. Like Christina saying about everything being so exciting. I'm just going to revert from that quickly and say about that as well. From my perspective, from going every week at Spurs, everything is different at the club now. You know, yeah. you've got the trumpet before the game. You've got the whole feel around the club. You've got the social media. You've got everything has changed. It's so positive and uplifting. And the fact that we're going to get Mickey back as well. Like, for me, if, we, if we've got him back for United, as everyone's saying, I know he was, was on the bench if he's going to start against United, then... You know, who knows what we can do because they're they're a massive. Me- I'm I'm so happy, and I'm going to be even happier when it's him and Christian. You know, back again, because um, I think as well we we were saying a little while ago about Christian. I think with I keep calling him Christian Romero. Um, I think <laughs> with him having Mickey next to him, he I know, I know obviously he's got the the annual red card, but I think having Mickey next to him, he was a little bit more sort of calm slightly. Like um, even the Sheffield United game, I remember. Um, Emerson was going to score up to a Sheffield United player and Romero was the one holding him back and I'm like that is that's not Romero that's not us you know so yeah so having Mickey back is going to be massive in terms of us actually playing the way that Ange properly wants to play because you know let's let's face it the Burnley game wasn't great to watch it's not it wasn't properly us I think the Bournemouth game was okay that wasn't that wasn't us properly I think once we've got everyone back we've got Madders back Romero back all of them we are going to be cooking some next level, honestly, I just can't wait. Uh, there's just so much to be excited about, and having him back is is the start of that. It's gonna be it's gonna be good. I think that's the thing. I think obviously against Burnley, we know that it just felt very disjointed, didn't it, Dakota? And I think having obviously Mickey Van der Ven back and then Romero, I think the core of the team is just gonna propel us to a whole nother level, isn't it? Oh, I think you're on mute, Dakota. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'd think so, and you'd hope so. Um, I'm interested to see. I, I was really hoping when uh, Mickey came back that Ben Davis would just slide over to the right hand side, but that's not going to happen with his hamstring injury. So another game or two of Emerson Royale at right center back, which if he plays like he did against Burnley is perfectly fine. Um, he did not put a foot wrong all game and, and was exactly where he needed to be. Um, so kudos to him for playing out of position for an extended period of time and doing an okay job. Uh, I think he's had a couple of good games and then the rest are, we don't need to mention them, but um, <laughs> I think having someone like Mickey Van de Ven next to him, you know, we saw it with, with Cootie. He, he was playing more confidently. So if Mickey is that, that type of player that makes the person playing next to him more confident, then maybe we're going to get more Burnley performances out of Emerson until uh, Cootie returns. Um, but yeah, I think it just it changes the whole dynamic of the team. And I think I, I saw a clip of uh, someone asking Mickey, you know, what is this? It's exciting times at Tottenham Hotspur, right? Everyone getting healthy. And he just got this big grin on his face. Like, yeah, it is exciting. We are getting healthy and hopefully everyone stays healthy because it could be fun. Um, so, you know, slowly, piece by piece, we're not just getting folks back. We're bringing them in. We're, we see an opportunity and we're going for it. And um, I think that's what we've all wanted out of our club for some time. And to see them do that now um, is not just refreshing, not just encouraging, 
um but it's it's like finally <laughs> we're chasing something definitely it also feels a bit alien but i'm fine with alien to yeah. be honest with you i'm down with yeah. it um but obviously i know we've spoken a little bit about the defense and i do want to revert it a little bit back to the burner game and christina i know we've mentioned that wonder strike already but i also want to mention the other fullback in adoji because my word that man is something else isn't he I know I'm actually love him as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's honestly like um oh, it, I was with uh, on last one on Spurs, Lee McQueen. He absolutely raves about him, and rightly so. He has just been this season every pretty much yeah every game. He's just been phenomenal for us. It's and it's incredible to see such a young player like him. You know, I I think oh just just the connection. I was I was actually going to point out as well. It's incredible with our team right now that everyone loves every player, pretty much. Like, it's not how it was a few, two seasons ago. It was just like Kane or Sonny. It's like, literally, everyone is now loving every individual on that pitch. And it's just such a great feeling. And it's so good to see that as much as we are loving these players, you can tell that they are loving playing, you know, at Tottenham as well. And it... There's got to be something that is obviously going well under Ange, you know. So, it, to me, it, it's not even just destiny. It's so many others. And Ben Davis, the, how incredible. Like, who was he, like, you know, last season? And now look at him. He's been phenomenal. He just There's just so much credit that I feel each player needs to get because it, they truly do deserve it. And how much of an improvement it's been is just so good to see. And... It's finally now we've got a manager that's come in and he's looking at each of these players individually and showing exactly what they can do. You know, not just throwing them into their, you know, strict, you know, set play and having it just their way, just how they think in, not actually realising that actually these players have got strengths and I can sort of, you know, arrange it, how, you know. Um, so, and I think that's what Andrew's doing. He's just bringing out what these players can do best and that's why I'm you know with this new signing well whatever new signing we get in I just feel like he's going to get the best out of them so I'm sure every like loads of other players are now going to look at Tottenham and think this you know I actually do want to play under Ange um so uh it's just I, I'm yeah I'm feeling very positive even after a game where we didn't even play I didn't think particularly very well it's still positive and I think that's a really good sign. So, you know, I'm I'm just hoping now with the draw that's going to be coming up soon that we get someone decent. You know, I, I honestly believe with this FA Cup, we we've really got a strong, you know, a strong um, chance of this. I'm just really praying for it because I need to see Tottenham win a trophy now. I need to have it happen now, guys. It's just getting too too long. I'm li I'm literally I'm going to be turning 32 next month and. It's been a long time, so <laughs> we uh, we just need to get through this Liverpool away draw that we're going to get next round, and then we'll be on three. Who knows? Man City might get Liverpool. I'll you anyone, never know. I'll take anyone, honestly. Under Ange, we can do it. Um, I, yeah, know, me, let's go. Yeah, yeah, For exactly. Salad. Give me Liverpool. Somehow Salah is back from Afcon and is shining for them. I don't care. We'll yeah, <laughs> that's but the thing. To be fair, that is how we should be thinking. Like. If you want to be a strong team, you should just go with whoever and, you know, go out with the, with that game and beat them. <laughs> so, that's yeah, men, men, that's how you've got to be mentally. Well, not so much maybe the fans, but the players for sure. <laughs> but, you know, that's how it is. As I said, so they don't give me heart attacks um, throughout the game. That's, <laughs> that's what Spurs do anyway, regardless. Um, but, Connor, obviously, I want to talk about Pedro Porro's wonder strike. And honestly, it was out of nothing. I was, <laughs> sounds really bad, but I was going to turn the telly off when Richardson <laughs> missed that chance. I was like, nope, I can't do this anymore. And I'm glad I didn't because that was an absolute whiz bomber, as I like to oh, call it. Oh, what a way to cap the win, honestly. But you know, he has it in his locker. You know, I mean, probably the best of the bunch he's scored for us so far, but he does have that in his locker. And I think, you know, we all we all rave about this, this current crop this season, but I think Porro even... You know, the back end of last season was was already showing the player that he is in when when things were, you know, very dark for us in terms of, you know, Conte, Stellini, Mason, a, a right mess. Porro, Porro was one of the bright spots, to be honest. Um, and yeah, he, again, phenomenal. He, I wouldn't say he had the best game against Burnley in general, but 
I'd, I'd say the fact that he's the sort of player that can that can pull that out. You know, I, I look at world football in the minute, and you know what? I'm I'm going to big up our players. Are, are there many right backs at the minute that are better than Poro? Mm, I'm I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I, I love this guy, but I'm going to go back to a doggy and say how special he is as well because left backs are so hard to come by in modern football. So hard, and this guy has hit the ground running straight away. And you know, it's a big shout to Paratici again, isn't it? Because you know that was that was that was foreseen, but. Yeah, no. For me, right? I know. I know how much we love that Poch era with with Rose, um, Rose and Walker, and then Trippier. But this is like, it's early days. But I'm already like, I feel like this is like, you know, a level up from that straight away. I like. It's just so you can you can rely on them straight away. And yeah, all right. A, a doggy's got the got the odd you know, book in here and there in him. But he's young, and and that's absolutely fine. Um, no, I think we're in such safe hands with with Poro and a doggy on on either side. Yeah, it's uh, it's great, and to, you know to have our fullbacks able to pull that out of the locker, you, you need players across the pitch to be able to do that in a game. Say we're in a really tight game because we used to struggle all the time to break teams down. If we've got players that can do that, then we're laughing. So, no, it was it was quality. What a way to win it. It was really good. And I think the thing is as well, Dakota, like the guys have already said in, in terms of our fullbacks and, and how we play through the game, it's the fact that, like Connor said, it, you wouldn't necessarily say Pedro Poro is going to be the player that's going to win you the game, but it's so nice that we've got these players to rely on now that, that can kind of wing anything out of anything, which would have been obviously, I'm not saying Pedro Poro is like Harry Kane, but would have been potentially like Harry Kane, wouldn't he? He would have pulled anything out of the bag. But you're seeing other players across the pitch. And do you think that's because it's this Ange feeling of, I can do whatever I please and I can do it well? I I think I think you're onto something there. And I th I think what that does what Ange's approach does because we've heard that he doesn't get super close to the players he doesn't he's not going to sit down and have a coffee with you and ask about your weekend you know um he's kind of a hands-off and lets the players take ownership and they're rising to the challenge they are taking it on they're saying okay this is up to us we want to go do this we're going to go do this and yeah now no one is looking to one any one person to pull that goal out of the bag. Everyone is saying, let me go do this. And um, I think that's a real testament to Ange. And I think I think we can trace that all the way back to appointing Sonny as captain. Because the argument that I made when it first happened is appointing Sonny as captain is effectively appointing everyone as captain because of the way that Sonny approaches his relationships with his teammates. He, we have seen him be, you know, pretty empathetic and he's a friend to everyone. It's Uncle Sonny, right, is who he is. So everyone wants to play for and with Sonny. And when you do that, his armband essentially goes to everyone else. So everyone is taking ownership of not just their position or the defending their man or, you know, getting an assist, but having this team cohesion, this team performance to go out and win games like Burnley that we maybe would have lost 18 months ago, 12 months ago, six months ago, we, we ended up winning it. And I, this is super niche, but this is just how I, how I roll Pedro, uh, Pedro Poro's full name is Pedro Antonio Poro Sauceda, which is uh, perfect because that goal was saucy. <laughs> I like it. I like, I like it. that. Really that is getting clipped, the coat, man. I like that. That is excellent. <laughs> um, but no, it, it was saucy. And I think, um, like everything, it, it was something we really needed because I, I was falling asleep and about to turn it off. Um, but Christina, it's not like Tottenham not to do things in true Tottenham fashion because I nearly had about seven heart attacks towards the end of the game when Burnley got a corner. And why can we never do anything easy? I swear. <laughs> Oh my God, can you actually imagine going to the game? Like, I'm so glad I didn't. My, literally, my, one of my managers offered me his ticket and I was like, oh, I was like, actually, no, it's not like, it's too cold. Like, I, I just thought, no, it's not going to, I can't do it tonight. Um, But we just always make it tough for ourselves all the time. I don't know if it's just a tradition for us now. It's, it's just, it's frustrating. It is frustrating, but... It's such a huge relief when we actually do get a win when we play like that, though. Um, I, I just wish with the Burnley, like, for, for to me, if we went out there and scored a good, you know, three goals, to me, it just sends a, a stronger message out to the other team. Um, it's just, oh, yeah, I, I, I just wish that we could play it bigger. But I'm, I'm going to stay positive because when we do start to get our actual 
you know, players back, our stronger players. Madison, when he comes back in. Um, Mickey, obviously, you know, those big players have made such a huge difference. And, you know, you, you can tell by just watching us now. Um, I, I feel like we're lacking so much in creativity and that's exactly where Madison's come from. Um, and it, it's, it's truly incredible at, you know, just the difference. Um, so that's why I, I just feel like that win was like job done move on to the next one now and now hopefully we're going to start to see them come back so hopefully you know the big wins are going to come so who who knows who we're going to get in the next draw now as well so hopefully if it's someone bigger then you know bring on the you know bring on the big boys with all of these injured players that are going to come so we need to give ourselves a task i guess so <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, uh, and like we're all kind of saying, it's all part of the fun. I can say it is not fun. Uh, it is very <laughs> stressful, um, and that's even on my uh, sofa at home. Um, so God knows, um, Connor, because you were there, Connor, weren't you, at the game? I was. Yeah, so how, how did you feel when you saw that Connor oh, going? Oh, mate, how did I feel? Like you say, it's just the Tottenham way, isn't it? Literally, you're like, how can we just never do this easy? Like, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful that it wasn't an away game uh, i mean it, the next one probably will be but because we just have that pattern emerging in in the cup games where we go away and we put out a slightly you know like yeah I, I, if we have an away game i shouldn't get tickets because my away record with this club is not great but um but yeah no i'm not gonna lie to you the atmosphere wasn't great i i, I think maybe that was another thing as well the atmosphere wasn't great in general so maybe that was a bit of nerves across the ground everyone feeling a bit sort of oh my god are we actually gonna gonna do this again you know but, but you know we've got to bear in mind this time last year it was a pompey we had in the cup at home and we, we just beat them one nil harry kane carried us you know mm -hmm. that was that was probably more painful so um but i, I think i think it's a it's a sign and, and like like christina said as well you know like the coach said when we got the players back it's going to be hopefully more comfortable but i do want to say about the celso and i know no i'm not going to rave about anyone too much because it wasn't a great game from everyone but i think his redemption arc is insane because for me from my perspective this guy you know everyone was living in dreamland on twitter about him Bele. oh and is going to come back again i'm just going to love him he's going to be great he's going to be fantastic and it's not happened but for me the celso i i i sort of wrote the sell so often said this guy's done it you know and he's come straight in and he's done a job he's not done a madison job but he's done a job and i think that is that's what you want you know if we're a team that's going to make statements if we lose a madison we need someone to come in and do a job and he's been doing that so but again that's instinctive of the world the world the work that i'm just done um yeah so I'm, I'm i'm relieved but it but it wasn't pretty and just i hope next round it is a lot easier um, but again, it's Tottenham, so it probably won't be. But. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Obviously, the draw is about, I think it's 10 minutes time. Uh, so we'll know our fate then. Um, but I'm just glad we're through to the next round and we'll bring on whoever we have in next. But obviously, we do have a league game up next, Dakota, and that is obviously Manchester United. So what is your kind of feelings going into this one? It's hard not to be confident because they're in such shambles right now. Um, but sometimes those are the hardest games to go win. Uh, you know, we like we, we we've been talking about a one nil win against a rotated Burnley side at home. And so sometimes these games where it's hard to get up for, you know, even from a fan perspective, um, those are the harder games to win. So I do think very quickly, I, we've got this first game, first win in the FA Cup out of the way. Hopefully that allows the next game to kind of the nerves will be calmed and we can go out and kind of play more confidently within ourselves. But um, yeah, back to league play against United. Um, who knows what their situation is going to be like? Probably about the same right now. I, I can't imagine they'd be bringing in, a, you know, maybe any players in the next week. Um, and I don't foresee them sacking Eric Ten Hag. So uh, we go business as usual. We should have Mickey Van Deven back. Um, but we, we have let a center back go on loan today. So uh, that needs addressed. I think it will be, <laughs> hopefully so. Um, so yeah, I mean, let's, let's just go out there, play our game, and it should be pretty straightforward. However, let's put an exclamation point on it. Let's send a message to anybody who's, got, who, who's in two minds about maybe joining Tottenham Hotspur this January. Um, let them know if they wait till summer, we will have outgrown their talent. And 
get some what a fantastic some... thing to say I, I love that that is the best possible thing you could have said that that's brilliant yeah you're right honestly yeah i love that that's great Dakota is the man of wisdom um that's why yeah. i have him on holly shots first man he is the man of wisdom but no i think you're exactly right Dakota. it'd be great to to put across a statement i mean christina like we all kind of said they're not in the best of shape at the moment now that might be a bit hard for us to face them but like we said with mickey van der ven coming back with the potential likelihood of, of uh werner the burner coming in i don't know whether he'll be ready for man united i'm not sure but it gives us another string in our bow doesn't it i'm i mean the annoying thing is whenever we do play united and they seem to look pretty poor and yeah. when we go and play them away we always make them look incredible that's my only fear i don't know if it's just the fear of anfield or something i don't know but i i to, realistically we should 100 percent beat them i mean look at the way that they are at the moment it, i mean who knows even tonight how they're going to play as well um because I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they actually do get a loss tonight um because i i just think they're all over the place there's just there's nothing i don't, I don't even know what, how to explain it they just look seem to look completely lost um so i'm i'm hoping that we do we beat them um it, it, it should be a win um i mean i always think whenever we play um, against United away was that game when Gareth Bale, I think he scored the second goal. And I think it was Clint Dempsey that scored the third, um, 3-2. And it was just absolute limbs because we hadn't beat them in such a long time away. And uh, it, needs, it needs to be done. I feel like we, we 100%, we need to go out there and, you know, get our strongest team that we do have, do it all over again. Um, and yeah, I, I'm hoping to... I'm hoping that Richarlison sort of comes back to how he was playing before because I, I have been criticising from the Burnley game, but you you know before that he he did start to score goals, and I think that's why I felt even more disappointed in his you know his performance at the Burnley game. Um, so I'm kind of hoping he doesn't drop off a little bit. I'm hoping he comes back now, scores you know scores against them, and you know we go for it because three points is going to be crucial. Every three points is crucial, but you know what? Everyone keeps saying that we have been ha we've had it easy. No, we bloody well have not. So, and it's just another game. If we do win, that we can turn around and be like, well, you know, beating United at home, away. Um, so, me personally, we, we should we should be beating them, especially if we want to be a strong team. You know, if we want to go for top floor, it, it should be in our hands this one. But who knows? Like I said, it always seems to come down whenever United playing bad. We always bloody make them look incredible, but who knows? <laughs> but it is true. It is true. And it's annoying that that happens. But hopefully we can uh, change that kind of script and it'd be different. Um, but obviously the thing is, like we all kind of talking about, it's the fact that obviously, I know Dakota's mentioned, we've seen Ashley Phillips go on loan today. And obviously Davies is going to be injured. Mickey van der Ven's hopefully coming back. So is it Emerson and, and Mickey van der Ven that you pair together? Uh, Connor, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I, I think so. Um Unless Dragusin gets done, but I don't think Dragusin is going to get done. I think we're living in in dream world. Um, if if that is the case, to be honest with you, I, I mean, he's not going to put Dorrington in, is he? I mean, he's had him on the bench all this time. It, that would be, you know, everyone's saying about playing him, but you don't want to put him in the deep end and we go and ship five goals and his confidence is is hampered for for the next six months or whatever. So. Um, yeah, that 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 sounds about right. I think, to be honest, you know, anyone next to Mickey, you could you could call back Ryan Nelson if you want and put him next to Mickey. I, I don't I don't care, you know. Like I, I I love Mickey. It's for me. This is probably the most confident I felt going to United for years. Honestly, like I feel yes, they are a mess, but but I think in general, you know, the way the 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 belief that we've got. I, I know that we haven't been playing as well away from home in terms of you know when you're naturally away from home. We're not going to play that high line as much, and obviously with the players that we've had out. But I, I think with the way that they are, I think they could well lose tonight as well. Yeah, like, like it's been mentioned, you know, I think interesting what the Dakota, Dakota said about um, Ten Hag. I think if they lose tonight, Ten Hag could get the sack. But then again, who mm -hmm. do they go and get? But that's that's a different thing. Yeah, no, for me, like I say, I, I I don't care who goes next to Mickey, frankly, because it's Mickey and Mickey's my boy. So. Um, but I'm confident. I, I, I am actually confident. And, and I never, you, you you know me, Holly, I never come on here and sit and say I'm confident that Tottenham are going to get something. But I am because I just feel like, you know, and, and it's a statement. If we go there and beat them there, it is a statement. And and it's it's even more funny just seeing them fall off even more. So, 
no i'm yeah i'm and i'm excited i'm I'm excited and those those sort of against the big six we're never we we are always a little bit nervous and and i think you know the, the statement this season was away at arsenal where we actually came back and we came to the game and got something so yeah i i i think i, I think we get something for sure like I say, and and put whoever you know, put Fraser Forster next to next to me. No, don't do that. I was going to say, please don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's too far. But yeah, no, I'm confident. I'm confident. I think it'll be all right. I think I think we are all we are all confident. It's just whether Tottenham are going to do the easy thing or the hard thing. And as we know, as Spurs fans, Tottenham always like to do it the hard way. But hey, if it's three points at the end of it, I don't really care. Um, but I'm going to kind of get your last kind of thoughts. Um, Dakota, obviously at the start of the season, I wasn't sat here thinking we could potentially push for top four. Um, but now that, that could be a situation that does come our way. And and with that, is is are you obviously you're gonna be glad that that's the, the occasion, but is it something that you think and I know we've banged on about Andrew all uh, evening, but it is true, isn't it? It's the fact that we've got this manager and are you happy that now it almost feels like Spurs have a plan in place, not just for January, not just for the summer, but for future seasons ahead? Yeah, this is so. I, f- I feel like I'm finally seeing the the fruits of my labor in defending the club and the people who run the operations for the last like two years. Uh, you know, Holly, we've had our discussions about Daniel Levy, and you know how I feel about about him. And I feel like I'm like I finally have something to be like, yes, yeah, see. <laughs> um, I only took a little while though, Dakota. <laughs> I, it, it took a little while. I had to I had to hide in in a hole for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> And now I'm popping my head out, like you guys still here? <laughs> um, but yeah, it feels good to to have to be able to see the purpose, the purposeful movement forward. And um, you know, we've had a couple full seasons in the stadium now. I feel like we're seeing the benefits from that. We're in. We seem to be in no hurry to get naming rights for the stadium, which I think is a good thing. Feels like we don't need it. Um, I'm sure when we need it, it will be done very quickly, quicker than. Timo Werner deal of two minutes. Hey, you want to come play Spurs? Yes, please. Um, and yeah, it, it feels good. And I think Ange is a perfect representative of of that that style of of approach. Um, you know, we we hired Scott Munn in in the summer. Um, we've got a director of football who I is maybe doing something or maybe is just a front for Paritici. Um, who knows? But yeah, it it seems like we finally have all of these pieces that fit in the puzzle instead of here's a big flashy name we have a big flashy stadium let's bring these together to make a big flashy club that's not exactly who we are um so it seems like we're sticking true to our roots now and we are moving forward in this in this way um i even before we hired Ange, i i told uh my my friends over at the tottenham depot podcast that i felt we were going to get him I felt like we were going to ple- be pleased, um, and I told them I had a hot take that I was going to hold on to, and I did so for about ten minutes, and then I unleashed it on them. And that is that I I think Ange is going to be going to leave his post as Tottenham Hotspur manager, our most decorated manager in our history. I think he's going to be here for a while, and I think we're going to do a lot of winning while he's here. Um, and I mean, we're seeing it already. He's been here six months, and we're talking about could we? We didn't care. But but it was a joke for a minute and then it got serious. And now it's a joke again. And it might get serious again. Who knows? But it wasn't just us saying it, it was other folks too. So uh, it, it feels good to to see the club moving in a purposeful manner, um, finally. I was gonna say I want your crystal ball, Dakota, because I, I need some of that to be honest with you. But but you're right. It seems like you said, it seems like we are moving in the right direction. I mean, Christina, do you think that there's potential trophy and top four, or do you think one's going to succumb to the other? Do you think? <sighs> I'll be really dreaming here of what is going on. That Why is not? A, it's a Monday. <laughs> it's a Monday, and exactly, it's a Monday. <laughs> it's um, I mean, that is what I mean. Can you actually imagine us getting top four and then you know winning the FA Cup? That's just such a huge season, and even for Ange himself, who. People forget he hasn't even been in the Premier League. This is his first time. Um, you know that would be absolutely tremendous. I mean, I I don't know about you guys, but when we first got Ange, I didn't exactly think, oh yeah, we're going to be aiming for top four. And then literally, what was it in the month we were, you know, top of the table. But even when that happened, like 
it was just like, this is just a good run. To me, this whole season right now is a warm-up. It's the warm-up of what is to come. Um, so that's why I'm, I, you know, as to me, I still prioritise FA Cup. If we get top four, that to me is, that is phenomenal for our, our season entirely. Because um, I never would have assumed that we were going to get top four. Um, but you know what? The thing is, it's really difficult this season because I feel like with the top teams at the moment, there's a lot that are dropping as well. And it's really tight. Um, so to me, this one feels like anything could literally happen. I don't know. You know, it's so hard to predict this season because um, there's just so much drama and there's just so much going on in that top five um, at the moment. I mean, they were literally talking about Arsenal being top of the league and now look at look what's going on, you know. Not, not to pinpoint, obviously, them because you know, of who they are. But it, it's true, though, you know, they they were playing incredible. Um, and obviously, they seem to have been, you know, clocked out or whatever. They, you know, people have sussed them out. And now that they're in trouble. And, um, you know, Man City, of course, you know, they've had a few games where they've lost. And it, it, it's, it's incredibly tight. So anything can definitely happen this season. Um, but that's why with every game that we go for, we need to go in strong because, you know, we haven't got European games. So we're in a good chance. We're in a good position. Um, the only thing that's really mucked us up is these injuries. These goddamn injuries. Because I truly believe if if we didn't have any of this, I think we would be still top. I honestly do. Um, so it, it, it's so difficult um, to see it. But in all honesty, with, with, with our position at the moment, um, like I said, I, I feel strongly with the FA Cup. I feel like we definitely should um, be going for that. Top four, it's, it's, it's a big, you know, it's a big deal. But we can do it. I'm sure we can. It's just if we get the job done, that's it at the end of the day. And see how these transfer, you know, this transfer window goes because obviously we're going to need some backup 100%. And I'm sure they know it. I mean, it's incredible how much we've got through, you know, this month. It's, it's, it's insane. So, yeah, we, we, we're going we're gonna to have to just see each game how it comes. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for the boys. I was going to say, yeah, I think, like you said, I, I'm one of these people that won a trophy as well. It's been too bloody long. And it'd be nice to get top four, especially of how far we kind of fell last season. But for you, Connor, what is it? Top four, trophy. What is it? Uh... <laughs> What is it? It, it? It's good vibes for a start. Can I just say that I'm I'm loving the massive optimism from Christina and Dakota in terms of the fact that you know, like, again, it was it was so negative last season across the fan base, and to, to, you know, for us to go from there to there in such a short space of time is insane, and that just speaks of this insane effect that we've had from Ange and the belief across the club. Um, trophy, of course, we want the trophy. Listen, we've been crying out for trophies since 2008 well, since after 2008 you know so 100 i want the fa cup i want us to go all out w without a doubt um i'd rather us do that because from the from the face of it this season was a free hit for Ange. i'd always said that i'd always have from the start i think we are way beyond expectations beyond what anyone had said you know you, you saw these these betting companies tweeting about how most people had backed Ange to be the first manager to get sacked it's hilarious you know that so many people had, had slept on us um some of the fan base had slept on us, you know? So I think that, that it'd be great if the FA Cup was the priority. I'm not sure it will be, but the most important statement for that is that you put out that strong side. So please, 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 yes, I would take the FA Cup. That would that would make my that would make my decade. Honestly, just, just have the FA Cup. But you know, top four, top four is a bonus. But if we don't get top four this season, we'll definitely get it next season. I'm 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 so much belief in this man and and the people around him you know i mean everything has changed like and and like you say there was a lot of doubt about all these players that were coming in but it, it, it's all it's all happening it's all working it's all flowing we've got such a young hungry squad so yeah without a doubt fa cup and if we get the top four it's a bonus if we don't we've got it next season we've got a lot to look forward to but yeah just just i i know that come may if, you know, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be smiling. I'm going to be beaming more than I was last May, where we were standing, we were standing in the stadium and watching Harry Kane. Well, I mean, you walked off. You didn't want to yeah, see I it. Yeah, walked off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and, um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I know this time 
this year is going to be positive vibes. And I, for me, it's crazy because when Kane left, I never thought I'd have felt like this. I was so down in the dumps. I, like, I, I was heartbroken. And to, to think that we've, you know, imagine if we still had him. Imagine what we still could have done if we still had him. But but no, yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. FA Cup be great. But um, just just keep backing the manager and being positive. That's that's all I will, I will say to anyone. Mm. Definitely. And I think that's the thing, like you said, we it was like a horrible nightmare at the start of the season. Oh, Losing. God. I've just oh, seen it. <laughs> Woo! If we're gonna oh, do it, no. do it now. <laughs> oh well. It'll be fine, oh, like we said. I've never so won. won. <laughs> <At home. sighs> well, that'd be exciting. Um, so yeah, Tottenham have at Man City at home. Lovely, jubbly. I mean, we did say on the podcast we're facing whoever we have to face. We've got to beat the best to, to be the best. So be it. Um, so let's take them on. Um, but you know what? Like we said, this season's kind of foundation, but we've got a bloody high foundation to stand upon next season. Um, so bring it on. And like somebody said, actually, where's Man City's bogey team? I did forget that. So there we go. Happy days. They've never scored in our stadium. Mm. Never scored. There we go. There we go. So fingers crossed we get through to the next round after beating City because that would be lovely. But you know what? It's been an excellent evening tonight, obviously dissecting that Burnley game and more. I just want to go around the table and say my goodbyes and thank you. So start with Dakota first. Thank you again so much for joining Dakota. I'm not sure what the time zone is out there, but thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, it's 3 p.m. in the afternoon. It's That's oh, not too bad. <laughs> yeah, no, it's nice. It's nice. It's nap time for the kiddos, so I get to come chat with you lovely folks while they take a nap. And it's how else would I want to spend nap time? You know, it's great. <laughs> but no, thank you to come. Where can everybody find you? Uh, you can find me on all of the social media at Dakota J Booth right here. And you can find me occasionally, but more more often my friends over at the Tottenham Depot podcast at Tottenham Depot on socials. Nice. Again, thank you so much, Dakota. And also, Christina, it's been amazing having you on the show. Where can everybody find you as well? Thanks for having me back on, honestly. Uh, I feel so bad the amount of times I've thought I've let you down. <laughs> um, but we, fin we finally did it. So, um, yeah, you guys, I'm usually on last one and third. So um, that's where you guys will find me. That's where I am. <laughs> amazing thank you so much again and also connor thanks again my friend for coming on where can everybody find you thanks again for having me mate always a pleasure and it's in you know it's a bigger pleasure that we're actually doing well and we've got lots to be positive positive about um yeah i go by cc's mcclavenia um on twitter instagram TikTok. if you know me i rant about football and i also make loads of silly parodies um probably got one for werner not as good as werner on the dance floor clearly because that one's <laughs> brilliant <laughs> Um, but there'll probably be one for Werner as well. So um, that's where you can find me. But um, but I know that you are really close to 3K. So everyone, keep yes. subscribing, keep sharing. Holly is so close now. So let's make it happen. A, a nice Amazing. new year. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. And like I say, thanks to everybody else as well that's been in the chat tonight. It's going to rewatch this back. I am going to try and be organised this year and get it on uh, audio platforms. So make sure you keep your ears open for that one. Um, but like I say, we've got a lot to look forward to. Um, Holly Sotswell's live will be back. Obviously, same place, same time, next Monday at 7pm. Hopefully dissecting uh, a win against Man United. But until next time, come on you Spurs.